So if you've never surged before, you're gonna wanna give yourself a few minutes to practice and get the hang of how a serger feels and how fast this particular machine is. Start with scraps that are straight, so it's a little bit easier. With a serger, you have four threads typically. It can also uh, be a three thread overlock stitch. Um, it is also called an overlock machine with an overlock stitch. That's, that's the other sort of industry name for it. If this comes unthreaded, which a lot of times it does, you can look, um, well, you shouldn't really be doing this because they don't like everyone getting into the inner workings of it. But if you lift this part of the table up and then this is a door that's spring loaded right here. If you slide it to the right and then pull it down, it shows you how the threads are threaded inside with a little map right here. So you can theoretically <clears throat> fix the machine if it becomes unthreaded somehow, or it might just be a single thread that comes out of one of these main um, straight stitch needles and you can just run it through the appropriate needle. Hopefully it'll be fixed. So there's a couple of things that's different about a serger than a regular machine, right? So first off, if you look in the bottom where the pedals are, we don't have a knee lift for this. We have a pedal, the very right side pedal is what lifts your presser foot. And then the bigger pedal to the left is what makes the machine go forward. Um, you also have a cutting mechanism on the right side of your stitch. So once it, um, or right before it gives the overlock stitch to your project, it trims the fabric off perfectly. So this can be good and bad. You want to know this and that's why getting practice with some scraps will really help. A lot of times you can get away with just using an overlock stitch if you have enough threads, like a four thread overlock. You can just use that overlock stitch as your foundational construction and your seam finish in one. Um, but sometimes, a lot of times, for especially for homemade goods, like we are doing, I would consider this homemade. You would do your lock stitch or your standard straight stitch on our regular machines first, and then you would finish off the excess um, or the seam allowance and the raw edge with the overlock. So in that sense, you wouldn't really need to or, um, or want to, I guess, take off the seam allowance that you have extra. You can, but you definitely just don't want to get close to your original seam. So the threads here, you never can pull your project out like we do in the regular machines. You don't pull this thread, you let the thread um, feed a little bit further and then cut the project away, leaving a tail always. So I'm gonna lift the presser foot <coughs> with the right side pedal and place my project here. Notice where the blade is and where you want the um, project to be, whether you want it to be just inside the blade so it doesn't really affect the edge, or if you want to cut off a little section of your project, say an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Position your material um, intentionally and let go of the Pedal, so the presser foot falls back down and I'm going to turn the machine on now. Just like any other machine, this machine has a very specific um, speed and tendency to stick right before it starts to stitch, so you want to get a good feeling for that. So this is what it should like if it's or look like 
if it doesn't look like this when you're finished, then something's probably wrong. Maybe one of the threads have um, come out or uh, just look over the machine to see if something looks off. You should have two single rows, so a double row of stitching, your regular lock stitch, and then the cover stitch is made up of all these additional threads that go over the raw edge or what would be the raw edge. So this is what I mean about letting the tail run off. You definitely don't want to cut this off close to the machine. You want to let the machine make a tail like this and then cut the threads off close to the project. And then this is left there to start the next project. If you do cut it close to the machine, it's just going to be much easier for the threads to come out of their homes. So do that a couple times on the straight practicing if you've never worked with a serger before. Get a hang of it. Try to get in the habit of leaving that tail at the end of your project like that and clipping close to the project. And then move on to a curved section like this so you can get the feel of what happens when you need to serge a curved edge because it is very different and you have to take your time and be careful with it. And it's a little bit like you need to hold the project taut in other areas and give it support. But the more you practice with this, the more, the more you will get the feel for it and what is required to get a, um, a nice looking scene.